Hi everyone, thanks for watching. Today I'm with Jamie Spate, professional boxer, veteran of 61 professional fights and three-time two-weight Southern Area champion. So thank you very much, Jamie, for uh, taking the time to have a chat with me today. Really appreciate no problem, that. Mate. Thank you very much for having me. Well, I've, I've been training people for a while and I'm always... I always tell people in the gym, if, if even if I'm if I'm in the gym doing a workout for myself and I see just like general gym users it in the bag or something, I'll pass on advice where I can and yeah, it just sort of feels natural. So um, I've started as I'm tailing out towards the end of my career, where you know my my career is not at its peak anymore. I'm not in the 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 hard. I'm not doing silly twelve, ten and twelve week camps and all that lot. I'm just you know keeping nice and keeping teaching people. Yeah. And where it's got to that stage, I'm spending a bit more time helping others and passing on the knowledge that I've picked up along the way. But I've took to it quite well and I enjoy passing on knowledge and helping people. So, yeah. Make, make their life a bit easier in their, early in their careers, you know what I mean? So, I mean, starting at the beginning, um, you know, with your, with your boxing career and everything like that, I mean, you know, where did it all begin for you? Where did you sort of first get into boxing? I was young, mate. I was about... I think I was between seven and eight when I first started boxing. And it was all to do with, I had a bit of a hard early life at school. Um, I, was, I was bullied at school, but primary school. And it was the same sort of group of kids would do it day in, day out. Um, only like, it's petty stuff like, you know, you're kicking and punching dead arms, the verbal bullying. You, when you're a kid, you used to collect micro machines and stuff like that, like stamping on them and stealing them, so on and so forth. And um, yeah, my mum and dad kept going into school, um, speaking to the teachers, speaking to the head teacher, and it was an ongoing thing and nothing was ever done about it. It got to the stage where my dad, he's a man's man, he's a, Whoa. that's it, he's not having it. So he said, right, said to my mum, that's it, I'm going to take him to the boxing gym. Mum was all, oh no, violence and all that. Like a lot of women are, to be fair, and they don't understand it. Anyway, uh, yeah, took me to the gym at seven. By the time I got to about 11 or 12, I realised, you know, I'm, I'm not bad at this. So I stuck it out and I, that's it. And, you know, it, it took a different path for a while where because I was bullied, I made the mistake of thinking the only way to stop me being bullied was to be the bully. And I went through a stage probably in my secondary school sort of life where I would be rude to people and pick on people because I thought in my head it was stopping me being the bully, being bullied. Do you know what I mean? Which obviously now looking back on that, obviously I had to. It took me a lot of years to turn people's opinion round of me because that's not the person that I am, um, and that's something that you know I feel very strongly about. So yeah, I stuck with the boxing because it helped me. Um, it helped me realise that you know I'm not made of, I'm not made of glass. I'm not going to shatter into a thousand pieces. Um, and I've been doing it since then. So yeah, I've 20, I think it's, I think I first walked in the gym in a November and I think by this November, I think it's 25 years I've been boxing this year. It's a long time. Yeah, that's fantastic. And I mean, you know, with something like that in mind, um, I'm, I mean, I'm going to skip to something I was going to ask later, but I, I'm, you know, you sort of touched upon it now. Is, I mean, if you had advice for people um, who are sort of coming into boxing now, um, I mean, what sort of thing would you say? And, and the reason I ask you that is obviously you've, you know, in your career, obviously you've had a lot of fights. You know, you fought all over the country, won titles, you know, you fought contenders. And, and they sort of, from my point of view, I'm looking at it from the perspective, you know, you've done like a bit of everything. Do you know what I mean? So um, with that in mind, I mean, you know, somebody coming into boxing, somebody wants to get started somebody wants to achieve things, maybe not just in boxing, but in, you know, in life in general. I mean, what would you, what sort of thing would you say to them? Um, always be open-minded and always be willing to learn. If you're, if you're open-minded and you're always willing to learn, then, you know, there's nothing really that you can't achieve because there's no, I suppose in boxing, it reflects the same in life. There's no one right way. There's no one right way to live life. There's no one right way to box. Everybody boxes differently. Um, some people are good at some things and others are good at others. You know what I mean? There'll be some things that you're great at and some things that you can't really get, get the grasp of. Um, and it, that reflects in life, I think. Um, so, yeah, if you're open-minded and you're willing to learn, as they say, every day is a school day, I believe you can go very far, not just in sport, but in life. Mm. 
That, that is some fantastic wisdom. Um, and thank you for sharing. And I mean, the other thing to touch upon is obviously, you know, to have the number of fights that, that you know, you've had, uh, you know, win these different titles. Because I know, I mean, I've talked about the ones you've won, but you've also been in, you know, very high level fights, you know, Josh Warrington, Joe Cardina, uh, Reese Bellotti, you know, people who've gone on to, to, you know, to be big names and things like that, as well as many prospects. Um, yeah. But I mean, what keeps... What keeps the focus? What keeps the motivation? What keeps, um, I mean, what is your why, basically, for doing this as well? I know, I know you touched on the bullying. But yeah, yeah. What keeps it, keeps it up all these years? It's all I've ever known. It's all I've ever known. And, and I don't know any different. Um, like, I mean, the most common sport played in the world must be football. It's got to be. So when I was growing up, all my kids, all my kids, all my mates played football. They all played football. They all played for different teams and, you know, I did, I did touch upon it, but boxing was always my first port call, um, and because it's all I've ever known, it's you know, what I mean, I don't know any different. It is what I do. Getting up and going for a run is something that I'm used to doing. Um, dieting is something I'm used to doing. Going to the gym and it in the bag is something I'm used to doing. It's something that I will always do. It's helped me not just physically but mentally. It helps me cope with things if I'm having a bit of a stressful time, be it at home or with work or whatever it is, I go for a run. I go to the gym and at the bags and I feel better when I come home. Um, and that's something that I'll always be thankful to boxing for. Uh, it's taught me a lot of lessons as well and I've met some great people in boxing. That is fantastic. And, you know, with all, with all the fights that you've had and, you know, like I was saying, you know, all the different sort of variety and things like that, what is for you like the proud um, moment of your career? Like, that, you know, the highest moment, the highest peak that you've achieved? Um, it's a weird question to ask because obviously when you're in the moment you don't realise where you're going to be that person's going to be in time to come so if you look back on that and you reflect on that obviously I shared the ring with Josh Warrington for 10 rounds for the English title um, I lost on points and he's gone on to be the IBF champion of the world and beats uh, big names Carl Frampton, Lee Selby so on and so forth um, and obviously after me and Josh boxed there was an issue in my camp with my trainer I ended up going to Leeds and I was in Leeds. I was living in Leeds on and off for about two and a half years. I trained with Josh every day. Um, his dad, who is his coach, Sean, who's still a very good friend of mine. I speak to Sean quite regular. Um, he was my coach. And yeah, that's quite a proud, a, a proud moment. Um, in the actual moment itself, probably my proudest moment would have been coming out in, in the O2 against Reese Bellotti for the WBC international title. Um, I think there must have been about 15,000 in the arena at the time. It was quite busy. Um, live on Sky Sports 1, we're chief support to the main event. And I'd say as a sportsman, that's as a British sportsman, you know, that's one of the pinnacles, being up there, headlined on Sky and that. Yeah, so it's got to be that. Yeah, got to be one of them too. Mm. And I mean, going back to you know, some, of, some of the big names you fought and things like that, you probably get asked this a lot. Um, this next question, but it's, it's something um, that I think people will appreciate. I mean, with your, what would you say is your toughest fight that you've had? But not only that, what have you sort of taken away, or like what lessons have you learned from your toughest fight? So it's sort of a, it's sort of a double-sided question, I know. Yeah, it um, is, and it's a hard question because, in my opinion, a toughest fight is a fight. Say, say you've had a ten or a twelve-round fight, and you've had to slug it out, and it's been hard physically, mentally. You've been injured, but you've pushed on through. Uh, at the same time, your toughest fight could be didn't last that long or, or something, or the kid was just that good. Um, so quite, quite often I get asked, who's the best person you've boxed? Who is the best opponent? And for so me, without a shadow that. of a doubt, skill and ability-wise, it was Joe Cordina. Um, he was unbelievable. Um, and I'd, I'd sparred with Joe prior to the fight anyway. I sparred with him possibly two years previous, I used to do a lot of sparring in Newport. I used to go up and spar with Lee Selby, Andrew Selby. I sparred with Joe up there. And it was good. It was 50-50. It wasn't a bad spar. So when I was offered the fight, I based me saying yes to that fight on what I knew of Joe, which he advanced so much since turning pro and developing his professional style. He was, I'm a clever boxer, which is why I've got the name The Genius. I'm clever. I do things. I work things out. I'm very, very technically clever. And Joe Cordina was probably two or three steps ahead of me at all times. It was shocking. He was very, very good. 
Um, with regards to hardest fight, I would probably have to say the Josh Warrington fight because when you add it all in, until you've been in that ring, you don't realise how much pressure's on you and how much an atmosphere and a crowd can affect you. Um, they were the most hostile crowd ever. I couldn't even hear my entrance music. I was listening from my, the time when I walk. I couldn't hear it because I was being booed that badly. They were booing me and heckling me and just showing their man absolute support, which is, is great for Josh. Um, but yeah, that was a hard fight. He was non-stop. His work rate is phenomenal. And I think you and the rest of the world have seen that now. Um, he doesn't give you a minute to rest. He's constantly in your face, constantly throwing punches. Um, and people used to say that he can't punch, and he can punch. Um, he can punch. Uh, when I boxed him, he could punch, and he's developed since then. He can probably punch harder now. But that was probably my most physically exhausting and draining fight because I couldn't switch off for a second. And Joe Caldino was the most technically gifted. He just, I couldn't touch him. He just blew me away. He'd throw punches, I'd tuck up, I'd go to throw back, and he's gone. And he's here and he's hitting me again. What's going on here? Yeah, he was he was fantastic, Joe. Uh, that is a fantastic insight. Um, and it is that is something. I mean, I slightly you know, slightly off topic, but um, you know, but I can definitely relate to that. I mean, even when Josh Warrington won the world title, I was there, um, ringside, you know, I was doing the photography as one of the ringside photographers, and you know, everything you say about like the atmosphere about his work rate and, and it is fascinating to hear it from a different perspective because there were some things yeah. That night that surprised me about how he's developed and Joe Cordina as well, who I, who I know. I mean, he does, he improves. You know, he improves every fight. So it's. Um, I mean, that's that's a bit off topic. That is, but I can I can definitely see see where you're coming from. And I mean, talking about this, I mean, you said that was like the physically, you know, the most hardest fight. And you've touched on a few good things there with the crowd and with uh, how that affects you. But I mean, how do you mentally prepare for fights? Because the reason I ask that is a lot of people talk very much about the physical preparation, which is, you know, which is which is very good. And I've seen like on your social media, you know, doing these meal preps and doing some fab stuff. Yeah. But I mean, what about like the 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 mental um, side of it? I mean, even going into a fight like Warrington, going into any fight. I mean, how do you personally mentally get ready everybody's got different opinions on this and um, is something that's not touched upon a lot in boxing and i think it should be more especially with the era that we live in now the amount of mental health that goes around and people struggling with day-to-day -day life and you know this lockdown has obviously been a hard thing for people mentally my opinion is that boxing is probably 80 percent mental and 20 percent physical as a fighter you are fit not many people walk into fighting and then in a year of pro, they, it's not very often it happens. You've normally been boxing for a number of years, if not your whole life, before turning professional. So the physical aspect of it is every day. You're used to it. Whereas the mental side, when you are going into a ring against somebody, it's not like you're having a fight outside of a pub. This man that you're facing is as prepared as you. He's had the same, if not more, time than you. He is physically able. Um... It's different. It's, it's so, so different. You know that he's got the ability to hurt you. He can hurt you as much as he wants and he's not going to get arrested for it. And that's the hard, hard thing to get your head around. And the way I deal with it, I just, I know that I've worked hard. So I know that from my side, I've put the work in. I know that I'm prepared physically. Um, so I just see it as end of the day, he's, a, he's, a, he's my weight. He's a human He's got a head, two arms, two legs, and he bleeds exactly the same as I do. And I know from personal experience, he's as scared as I am. He's as worried as I am. So I use all these things just to make it real. It's end of the day, that's real life. I know that he is as frightened as I am. So I just deal with it that way. Hmm. Makes a lot of sense. You know, it's, it's a good way to look at it. But I mean, following on from that, because again, you, know, you touched on some, some, some fantastic stuff there. You've obviously achieved a lot, right, in your career, um, very much so. And then, you know, obviously other times you've come up short and lost fights and, you know, even, yes. even got stopped early and things like that as well. So I'm thinking that you've sort of seen the highs and the lows. You know, yeah, exactly. And um, how do you sort of bounce back from sort of not achieving, some, you know, something that you were aiming for? I believe that as a boxer, you've either got it it's either in you or it isn't and it takes some sort of adversity for you to realize if it's there 
Um, some people have their first loss and they never return again, or they never return. They're a shadow of their former selves. And I believe it's these actions and how this happens is what makes you realise if it's for you or not. And I've always dealt with it okay. I mean, if there's a reason why I've not performed, then I know that and it's my job to correct that next camp, correct it next fight. Um, there was only one time that I considered walking away from the sport and I lost to a lad called Matthew Chander, who is a lovely lad, Matthew Chander, he's a lovely lad. And I was moving down to a lower weight, which I believed I could make. Um, and I struggled. Um, I struggled. Uh, I had to make weight. In, I've never, I always make weight every time and I always make weight well. I never do silly things. I don't ever sauna and do all these stupid things. I always make weight just by training hard, eating right, and that's it. And with the Matthew Chander fight, I woke up on the morning, I think it was, for, it was a super bantamweight Southern Area title, and in the morning, I was nine stone one and a bit, and I had to be eight stone ten. So I lost that. I got down to, I think I weighed in on the day at eight stone nine pounds, and I lost that in the matter of about an hour. And then I drove all the way from Devon to London in um, a sweatsuit with the heating on full whack, all the windows done up, woolly out on, hoodie over the top of the sweatsuit. I was wrapped up to the eyeballs and I was running, punching in the footwell, or punching in front all the way to London to get the weight off. And uh, that is a horrendous experience. And I will never, ever ever put myself or any other fighter in that position again if you can't make the weight don't fight simple as that but as, as a fighter you there's a sort of a no quit attitude so I pushed on pushed on so yeah it's um that was the closest I got to calling it a day I lost the fight I felt great I made the weight felt fine um felt brilliant in fact the next day refueled and then when I got in the ring felt a million dollars He's throwing the shots. In my mind, I'm going slip, right hand, left hook. But in life, I'm just going dunk. So my body and my mind weren't working together. Where I'd killed myself that much for the weight, I was just out to sink. And everything he threw, I had an answer for it, but the answer was coming five, ten seconds too late. Um, and I ended up losing on points. And uh, at that point, I just I really considered just calling it a day. Um, and that's the longest time I've ever spent out at the gym. I had three months off after that to spend some time, think about what I want to do and where I want to go. Uh, and yeah, after that, I decided, you know what, I've, it was my mistake. I shouldn't have done that way. I shouldn't have made it the way I did. So I, I returned a lot heavier than what I retired. I, what, what I stopped that, I come back a lot heavier. I think I was about, I think I was at my heaviest there. I think I was 11 stone three 11 stone four when i returned and obviously i had to cut all that back down again for my featherweight super featherweight limit but yeah that was the the only time i thought about walking away so, yeah, makes sense and i mean you know jamie i mean a lot of the questions i've asked have been sort of quite reflective they've been on you know things that have happened um in the past and, and everything like that but i mean in the future now, I mean, basically, where are you going from here? I mean, what, you know, what are your ambitions now? My ambition now is um, I love boxing, I love the sport, and it's, uh, it's given me a lot, it's shown me a good life, and I've, I've met some great people. So my job now is to pass on the knowledge. I mean, I'll still, I'm still fit. I've lived this life for 25 years. So I'm still fit and well. I've still got plenty of miles on the, uh, I've got plenty of miles in the tank left. So I'm going to do another year or two, I think, keeping busy, earning money, keeping myself safe and securing some sort of future money-wise. You know what I mean? It's good to leave the sport of a few quid in your pocket. As long as you leave with all your faculties intact and a few quid, then you've done a good job. So that's my plan. But at the same time, I plan to educate the youth coming through. Um, I wish that when I turned pro, I had somebody like me helping me, giving me advice. When I box these kids, I, I'm, I'm on the road now as the away fighter. And when I fight these kids, as long as they're respectful to me, if at the weigh-in, they shake my hand, they say hello, I say hello back, and it's all more mutual respect, then I will teach you and I will help you. In the ring, you often see me talking to them. And that's not being rude. I'm not going, ah, this, that, and the other. I'll be saying, 
look, don't do that. Don't lead with the left hook. Don't show the right hand. And I give them advice because I believe that it's a lot easier to correct it whilst you're in the, mo in the moment. Whereas going back to the gym two weeks later, a week later, and trying to think about what I've said and what position you're in and what was going on, it's a lot harder to retrace some steps. So when I'm in the ring and um, fighting people now, I hate I help them with everything I can and give them advice. And then I'll speak to them after the fight in the change room, so on and so forth. And that's basically what I see myself now. I see myself as an in-ring teacher. Um, if you make the mistake and, and I, when I, I beat you, I beat you. But generally, I'll try and help you the best I can. And then once my career is over in the next year or two years, um, I'm just sent off from my pro trainer's licence now. I'm working with a couple of kids at the moment. Um, so, yeah, that's going to be me. I'll be in it for the long haul. Okay, I like that. I mean, I like that you're basically teaching them on the job, basically. I mean, that's, that's it, yeah. That's fantastic. Um, and, you know, and I, I, again, it's a little bit off topic, me saying, but I, you know, I hope, I hope you keep that up because um, obviously being around boxing myself, you know, even with, with the media side, you see a lot of young lads come in and, and you don't really know what to expect. Um, yeah. And as much as there's people teaching them, you, you know, physically, there's not a lot of people guiding like the financial side of it or the mental preparation or yeah, yeah, yeah. lots of things. There's, you know, so if you, if you can sort of fill that gap even a bit, that, that would be, that would be really good. That would be class, you know. It's like, it's like, for example, like you're saying you worked in media and stuff like that. It's like you saying, you teaching, you've got a kid with you 16, 17, just come out of school, wants to work in media and you telling him on a Zoom phone call, right, try this, try that, do this, do that. And then him thinking about it later on when he's on his own and trying to do it all and remember it all, it'd be a lot harder for him than if you were sat with him on the job at some media coverage event and you were actually showing him and doing it for him. He's going to pick that up a lot better because he's digesting it. It's going in and he's using the actions. Mm. It's exactly the same with boxing. I think that I personally, as a, as a teacher, think it's best for me to show you and whilst you're doing it, you'll pick it up. And you'll learn from your mistakes. If I can catch you with a shot and say to you, don't do that again, you'll go, oh, don't really like that too much. I'll keep that there. So, yeah, it is what it is. I enjoy it. I, enjoy, I actually, I fell into the role quite nicely. I wasn't sure how I'd feel about, about it, about being an away fighter and stuff. After being, you know, a multi-weight champion, I mean, three-time Southern Area champion at two different weights. But yeah, it is three times. Three times, two weights. Should have been, I mean, we can if we want, if you want to argue about it, it should be four-time, three-weight, because Lewis Petit got, got let off, really. He got lucky, because I beat, yeah. I beat him quite convincingly, to be fair. Yeah. Anything else you, anything else you, you, know, you want to cover, or are you all... Sort no, of, yeah. I'll tell you what it was, because I've got to tell you the story of it now. Do you remember when Dean Powell, um, sadly, um, committed suicide? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, really. well... Dean was obviously a manager and he used to put shows on and that as well, as well as, I think he was Frank Warren's right-hand man, wasn't he, Dean? Mm, I think so, Now, yeah. I boxed Louis Petit for the Southern Area Super Bantamweight title and um, it was a show put together by Dean. It was Dean's show. Uh, I think Dean committed suicide something like six days or a week before the show, but they went ahead with the show and they went ahead with it in Dean's name and so on and so forth. And obviously... Louis Petit was managed by Dean. I was boxing him. I was the away fighter. I beat him convincingly. Outboxed him. Even his mates, Louis, his own mates, were saying to me afterwards, oh, we thought you won that, mate. Um, Richie Davis was the referee. Richie Davis, who was a very good ref, very good friend of Dean Powell, which, you know, fitted quite well. So he's, he's a mate of Dean Powell, refing on a show in memory of Dean Powell. It was Dean's show against Dean Powell's fighter, it all sort of sat yeah. quite nicely. I beat him convincingly. They give it 97, 96 or 97, 95, I think, to, to him. I just like, even the reaction, I think um, actions speak louder than words. We stood in the centre of the ring. I had my head up looking confident. I knew I'd won. Um, he had his head down like this. And when they announced that he'd won, he put his arms in the air, like all shocked. And it was like he won a world title. And I just went, Shook me head, started laughing. I couldn't believe it. And then mm. after the fight, I went into the changing room. And, you know, you've just won a Southern Area title. It's a big step for you. And if, if, he, if he genuinely thought he'd won, he'd have his mates in there. He'd be happy. He'd be partying. Uh, and I 
I went into my changing room and I said, I said, I can't, I can't let it lie. I can't let him think that he's won. I've got to go in and say my bit. So I went in respectfully, went into his changing room, put my hand out, shook his hand. I said, well done. I said, but you didn't win that. And when I walked in, all that was in his changing room was him, his family, and that was it. And they were all sat down on the benches. Louis Petit had put the belt to one side and he sat there with his head down like that. Not like joyous, sat there like that because he knows he's he lost. But I just said my bit. I just said, look, I, I beat you. I said, I'm willing for to have the rematch. I'll have it next weekend if you want. If Frank will put it on, I think I think Frank might have had a show the following weekend or the weekend after. And I said, look, I'll fight you on that show if you want. I'll have the rematch because there's no way that you won that. And nothing ever materialised a bit then. It just just faded away. And that was that. And what did he, well, what did he say to you in the, in the dressing room? I mean, you know, when you said to oh, him... Oh, very, very, very little. Um, he just said, oh, good fight. Oh, well done, yeah. Oh, great fight, yeah. But he never said, yeah, I lost. And he never mm. said, oh, I won convincingly. But yeah. his body language and his attitude spoke volumes. He was just head down, not really think, uh, you've just won your first title. You should be hugging it, cuddling it. You should, that was how you'd, you'd be elated. Instead, it was sat next to him on the bench over, or not even next to him, it was sat over this end on the bench. And he was sat there like that, getting his wrap shaken off by his dad, I think it was. So, yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, I know. I know in here, so it, it doesn't really bother me. I just get on with it. Yeah, and it's it's knowledge. It's knowledge that I can, like you say, for every every action has a consequence, and I gain knowledge from these sort of experiences. And it gives me, it puts me in a position to advise people moving forward of these sort of issues. So yeah, it's not too bad. And I can, and you, you know, you share some absolutely fantastic stuff. I think it can really help people really pass on. Uh, you know, pass on some of your knowledge. Yeah, um, well, that's what I'm trying to do, mate, now. Do you know what I mean? And I've started, I do a lot of one-to-ones. I, I work at a gym near where I live and uh, I do a lot of one-to-ones and I've had a, a working with this professional fighter at the moment. Well, he's not a professional yet. He's just turning pro. He's just finished his paperwork and that. He's signing with Steve Goodwin, who I'm with. Um, good kid, actually. And I'm quite impressed. With him. I'm, I'm intrigued to see how, how well he'll do. I think he can go the whole way. I think he can definitely win a British title. Um... But he's been doing bits of work with me, and he's just a friend of his that he knows has suffered with um, a few issues, and he, he, I think he had alcoholism or something, was addicted to alcohol, and he's messaged me personally and asked me if I can help him. So, yeah, I'm going to open with bits and pieces, and I enjoy that. It makes me feel like I'm, I'm doing some good in the world. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, that's. Um, I mean, that's everything, really. I mean, you know, you've covered absolutely some fantastic material there, and it's you know, it's it's a lot of wisdom. Um, that I think will, re- will really benefit people. Thank you very much, like I say, for, for taking the time to um, have a chat with me today and for taking the time to sort of share um, so much of an insight into your, into your life and career. Yeah, no problem at all, mate. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.